a demonstration dealing with uh, uh, threading uh, in some aspect or multiple aspects. This is another little box I made out of a piece of Paduk. Uh, I tried to thread it with a threading jig and it just chewed it up and <laughs> then I had to take the pieces that were left and still try to, because it was too nice to throw away trying to make a box, but I had to do a radical design change to have something whereas, you know, uh, the, the top and the bottom were going to be about the same size after I chewed up part of it. Kind of radical, unique. What size threads you used, you know? Uh, yes, that's 16. 16. Kind of adds an Asian flair to it there. It's a really nice starting, middle of the road uh, starting. And this is a, a, a box I made. It's got too many threads on it. You shouldn't have to turn it more than a, uh, one and a half turns for it to be useful. But a piece of ambrosia maple I got from uh, Wes Jones and a piece of walnut. And uh, this one was threaded on uh, the homemade threading jig that. Uh, I'll probably demonstrate in February. Bob's got one that fits a 12-inch lathe, and I got one that fits a 10-inch lathe. They're kind of fun. It's textured with a texture. texture. <coughs> and uh, this is a piece of maple. Uh, I just put a couple of beads on it, and no foot. I usually put a foot on a bowl. I didn't put a foot on this one, but uh, a little bead on the, on the inside. Very nice. I think this bottle set must be one. I'm Ron Harvey and one original in my truck, which was in his driveway. Sorry. Mm -hmm. um, I've been making wine sloppers and giving them to friends. And a friend went to Italy and brought us back this ceramic wine stopper. And I didn't know how to display it. So I had a piece of Dalmata, D A L M A T A that I got at one of the other clubs on the, you know, the raffle. And it was three by three by 12, and I had no idea what to do with it. So, split, I re-glued it. Mike was over the house, and he said, what are you going to do with that split piece of wood? And I said, glue it. And um, I made a wine bottle out of it. Good idea. And it seemed like fun. So, I made another one. And that seemed like fun. And I'm numbering them, because I'm getting better. <laughs> Jimmy's got another convert here, I see. <laughs> this one's Indian Rosewood, and it happens to look real neat with the Ebony Stopper. Somebody asked, come on, somebody asked Chattahoochee, is that hollow the whole way down? And I said, yeah, sanded too. Um, Polished too. It's hollowed down to here with a Forster bit. <laughs> and depending on whose stopper you use, sometimes they bought them out, so I learned it for it deeper. But, um, this was an expensive piece of wood, and I'm, I'm just absolutely thrilled with it. It's a really fun thing to do. What can I use that? Um, maple burl. Maple burl? Yeah. And that was, I think it was a $20 block. So I decided that's getting expensive. And I brought this in to ask Mike some questions on how to do it. That's firewood. <laughs> and it works the same way, you know. So I'm going to start doing them this way now. Mm -hmm. Okay, it looks like we got some more uh, well, bowls here. Mine. I was I was cleaning up my my wood pile underneath the sunroom, and I was this this is a really ratty piece of looking cherry. You know, half the, the log was about that big around, and half of it was all rotted all the way through, termite damage. One of it was dirt and mud, so I cut it in half, and and. Um, it looked pretty nice inside, so we'll go ahead and I'll make some bowls out of it. So I, it had, it's got a crack across the bottom, so I didn't really put a lot of effort into it. I was more or less just experimenting, giving with shapes and, and different uh, finishes. Uh, this is uh, Mahoney's walnut oil, about maybe eight, eight or so coats of walnut oil, and it's been drying now for a month or so, and I just buffed it this afternoon. And then this is the same thing, but this was uh, the seal coat with shellac. That's and the I'm, most shine I've ever I'm, seen out of, out of Mahoney's wall. Well, it, it dry. It, it, it was good and dry. You got to let it dry. And, uh, but it hardened. Wax. And then this, this was this, this, the steel coat shellac, the real thin um, uh, awesome. sealer shellac. And I put about, I put about, again, about eight coats of shellac on it. It's breaking? No, just out of bottle. It's just okay. brushed on. And this one, you know, the, the wood was turning really well and was, it, was, it was really behaving for a scraper. 
this one never had never had a sandpaper touched it. That's just strictly the finish I got off with the scraper. Cutting it off the scraper. It's got some rings in the bottom down there. I was, like I say, I was more, it's not going to mount anything. It's a big crack across the bottom that filled up, and it had some, some uh, insect holes in here. I just filled it, put some sawdust in there, and filled it up with super glue. So I just wanted to see what kind of a finish I could get off of it, just with, uh, with not doing any sanding, because I really don't like the sand very well. Someday you've got to do something serious. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Talk about this this goblet that didn't stay round. <laughs> well, that was a project uh, featured in one of the last two issues of American Woodturner, uh, and I just wanted to try it to see if I could do it. Uh, I took a couple of shortcuts. It's uh, a couple of purple heart boards that we had uh, lying around the basement. Uh, painted the inside of it with a, just a gold acrylic, and um, I think it turned out reasonably well. That will be the demo next month. So that was what offset turning? No. no? Okay. Come back, come back next month. Okay. Yeah. Changing guys. Yeah. Changing guys. Mystery will be revealed. Right. Right. Yeah, it's tough okay. to follow on offset. But some of you may <laughs> know what this is, but uh, my son and a couple of his high school buddies, uh, are, they they've never gotten apart. They live all over the country, but they get together four or five times a year. Um, anyway. One of them is a part owner, restaurant manager of a Japanese restaurant in Aspen and Vail. And there's kind of high end stuff there. And this is a traditional sake serving set. And uh, this is much too tall. It should be only eight inches, but this was practice for me, not for my son. I want to see if I can do it. Anyway, uh, this is a, a cup. In the restaurant, uh, a pitcher in four cups is goes for eighty dollars. Now the sake <laughs> can go hundreds. So anyway, I have a bunch of these in a box out in Bob's truck. If anybody wants this, maybe it's a Martin Birdhouse, uh, maybe it's a table setting, or maybe you can do napkin rings. I don't know. Maybe you want to make your own chopsticks, but there's wood out there if anybody wants it. It's probably good kindling. The reason is my son in Port Townsend, Washington talked to a guy in Dudley, Georgia about the bamboo he wanted and the guy gave him just what he wanted. Only thing it didn't have three inches above the note. <laughs> and I got a box of it. <laughs> so I had to take it. We, I, My son flew here to go straighten him out. <laughs> and we, went, we went down and came back with a truckload of big stuff. Now, I, that, that was my main thing, is get rid of this wood. If anybody can use it, you know, there's a thousand things you maybe do with it. So, Lewis Alexander has a, a, a crop of that out in his back. He probably mm -hmm. get some local grow. Well, actually, <laughs> actually the, the cup size is what Lewis has. Oh. And I did get a load of cups, uh, uh, poles for cups. From Lewis, and I hope I can get some more too. But I think, but, yeah, I think he's uh, got some really yeah, big some stuff back there in that back pasture. But this is probably an ideal size. It's eight to ten inches for the pitcher, but this is like fourteen. So, yeah, I mean, you'll get a pole, and you get like five of these out of that pole. And then they start to get stretched out. So these are practice. You're saying when this guy cut it for you, he cut it too close he to the... He cut it exactly point. like this. Okay. Okay. <laughs> he says, here's a box, here's what you he ordered, you know? Oh, okay. And, yeah. and it needs three inches above a node. Of spout. For the spout. Okay. Right. So, Interesting. Hi. You mentioned kindling wood. Um, I wouldn't just throw that in the fireplace because it'll explode. Bang. Bang. Yeah. It'll Oh, well, I, 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 I would assume somebody cuts it up before they use it for kidney. Yeah, I imagine this is a kind of a pipe bomb. <laughs> you do an inset and ring and make a box out of it. Have at it. <laughs> there's, a, there's, a, there's a carton out in the back of Bob's truck. You know, anything else? Okay, with that, we'll turn it over to Jimmy. <coughs> hmm? 